So when I talk about leadership, I think we can talk about it in many ways. But the way I wanted to talk about it today is around this idea of community champions, the ambassador, the most, the hardcore, you know. Because I would say to you that not all members of our community are the same and not all of them are equally engaged. And therefore, many of us treat different members of our community differently and have created like, you know, different, different segments, you know, sort of where we treat them a little bit differently. Um, so I'd love to get a hand from, you know, for some of you here, like, who here has got like a subgroup of, of those advocates, the most hardcore within their community? All right, so definitely this is like, I'm not the only person in the world, it looks like a lot of you have taken that path. Of those hands, tell me a little bit about like, what is this community? And really quickly, why are they different than your other community? What's the indicator of their awesome? <laughs> uh, sure, so I do online organizing, uh, and I've been working a lot with our field organizers in New York um, to engage people in their community, and they're hosting a lot of events, and a lot of the times it's um, rallies, a lot of those rallies are during the day, so they're harder to get to. Um, so we know that folks that come out to that kind of stuff to the day off work are like super engaged. Um, so <clears throat> I've been building like, um, figuring out how to track those people and keep track of when they're coming to events. Um, and then that kind of goes into their profile online. And um, then I know from there that I can invite folks that have come out to events like that to kind of like give them higher level asks. Um, so I don't always have to ask everybody to do this like kind of like really high level event mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so that helps us like keep the right people engaged in the right things and like give people the right level of right. ask for So you're segmenting to yeah, to ask the right, more difficult things of those who are more receptive of it. Mm -hmm. right. So are there others here? But give me uh, over here, I saw. Go for it. So I'm sorry, just to remind us of your name again, sir. Kaika. And um, I work with the Yale Administrative Education Network, and I think one of the things that we kind of done I think really well over the last, I don't know plus years is um, because we work with LGBT youth and advocating for LGBT youth, um, we do have a research arm and have done the research for the past 10 years, but that's kind of like a savior complex, right? Like adults speaking for you versus you speaking for themselves. Um, and so we started a media ambassador program where um, we solicit essentially the gazillion youth out there and saying like, hey, why don't you come and be a media ambassador for us? Um, and we, um, thankfully, because we have the resources to do so, fly them out to New York or wherever we're at, and we do a training with them about media um, and about speaking, so about blogging and blogging and everything. And um, so that way, if CNN or someone were to ask for a student story, then we have like a bunch of students that are our ambassadors that can speak so that we're not speaking on their behalf. Um, and then also, with, with regard to like a point that was earlier in terms of like getting anecdotal things, the good thing about that is also if there's something that comes up, we can ask for media ambassadors to like give us a quick soundbite um, mm -hmm. and then use that as a kicking off point for other people to kind of chime in. Um, so that's one of the ways that we can Awesome. I like that deep investment. Do others go for it? When I was at the end of the Boyd Institute, um, our ambassador group started with like senior women at our sponsoring companies. But when I came on and then we opened it up, and you know, when I put up a web page saying we had an ambassador program, we started hearing from women all over who believed deeply in our organization and wanted to get involved and help us. And we wouldn't have found them unless we'd gone public with it. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually we, we started we didn't have anywhere good on the website for someone who just wanted to say, I'd like to get more involved. How can I? So they would come to the ambassador page and I would get these emails from someone who had never been involved with us before, but would like to get involved. Right. And so then we had to start putting up a little, we didn't call it an application, but a little questionnaire. Like, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you would like to be an ambassador in the Borg Institute. We would ask some questions to help us gauge how well do they understand what we're doing? Where's the right place for them to begin at? And then I could go back and get them involved at the right place. And sometimes it was at an ambassador. Sometimes it was someone who wanted to start a women in tech the company. And sometimes it was someone who the first step would be join our Facebook group or listserv, you know. 
So yeah, I'm hearing different ways that people are bringing, like, bringing out in those ambassadors those hardcore. Sometimes it's just like, like, here's a form and people flock to it because they're desperate to get more involved. Others are more data driven. You're like looking at your email list and saying, who is actually like opening, forwarding, and engaging? So it, it's a different way of doing it. But um, let's get one more story before we move on to the next piece. Maria? Yes, we are probably in Latin America because the kids that I work, I work in the technology part, and I'm using NetSquare for this, they're very shy. So they don't want to be that. So what I do is I talk to the media. And they start talking on TV and newspapers and everything. So I, you know, at first they get very angry with me, but after a time <laughs> they really liked it. And I know it really worked because the New York Times showed Guatemala and started interviewing these kids. So now they're doing it on their own. I don't even have to force them, and they, we can, everyone has its own agenda. Okay, so I like to use the media very much in a very good way, and it's a way of projecting our agenda of leadership too. So I think there are some really amazing things happening here. And I'd love to hear some more about, about the investment that you make into those communities. So I've heard like some of you are like, are you flying people across the country, giving them in-depth media training? Like that's a significant <laughs> investment into your ambassadors. <coughs> for, for others here, how are the ways that you're investing into building the leadership capacity of those who have put up their hand for more? So I work, my name is Lisa Fainer. I'm from St. Louis. I work at the Parents and Teachers National Center. I'm not a community organizer, but I work in policy and advocacy. Part of my job is to try and coordinate 50 states and 2,000 programs and becoming advocates for their own programs. Easy. State level. Yeah, and it's only me. Um, <laughs> my, my director does federal stuff. So, but anyway, um, so one thing that we've done, and, and webinars are more intense, we, we really try to tailor our webinars specifically for their state needs. So for instance, if they have an advocacy day coming up, a child advocacy day, or some sort of legislative movement going on in, in early childhood, we want to motivate them. We try to say, we, we, we tailored this webinar, it's telling your PAT story to legislators, and we tailored it you know, to simple things like how do you look who your legislator is, but the, web, the webinar uses specific screenshots from their legislative web, you know, website, and, we um, screen cap uh, tweets that they can put on their own pages. Just trying to make it more theirs, but tailoring it to them, and then coordinating with state leaders in the community, um, scheduling times, a variety of times is available for them, because a lot of these folks work for state departments and can't lobby or advocate, so we have to do it on different timings. We have to do it on their own time. And then trying to break down those barriers. So I found those things to be successful. We're, we're building up that capacity and um, sort of building a library of things for them to take advantage of. We're also building toolkits, um, and that's been helpful. Things that they can do on their own. So we say, you know, how do you organize a site visit, for instance, so that legislators or some leader in your community can come come to your um, your program and see what you're doing and how how you're affecting changing your community with these kids. Um, and I, we're building those out right now. It, it's sort of a new process, and it takes a lot of time and investment on, on the national level, but we think that it's going to be a tremendous tool, and I'd love to hear more about what you guys are doing. If you have a similar, uh, I mean, I'm probably the only man we're going to Yeah, do. but no, I really want to come back to that, uh, that idea of building out the toolkits that allow people to move into their communities and, and continue the work. Um, and so uh, others, do you want to come at that? Sure, go for it. Uh, sure, um, because a lot of the ways that we support activists or network is to help them move like state legislation. So we'll, if they're working on like a state bill on hospital infection reporting, for example, um, we work with them to strategize on some of the policy and um, maybe even writing like a letter of support and sending it to the legislators on a certain committee and then we'll like uh, do a joint letter. Um, a, a huge part though is um, we uh, can set up an email action um, through Convio our system and to target like the state that that bill is moving and so it really helps that activist you know get Large access of um, a lot of people on our list. Right. <laughs> to yeah, take so action. you're leveraging your yeah. national power exactly. to their particular cause. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I want to add to that too. So, one of the things we got, in fact, we got in that surveying um, you know, player organizers was because uh, we asked, how could we make it easier for you to 
tell people in, in your community about TechSoup. And, um, and part of it was giving them that library of materials, you know, a PDF of a flyer that they could print out for meetings or a, a business card for the organization, business card size thing for the organization that they could We're finally out. getting around to that, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and some of those things cost money, you know, but, but also things like a little web badge that you put on your site, it says, ask me about, right? Or I'm, I'm a Net Square leader, right? And so um, giving people things that make it easy for them mm -hmm. to say, you can talk to me about this, mm -hmm. I can help you with that. Um, and also to give it to them in, in the formats that are most useful to them. Like uh, at ABI, if we gave people a call to action, we wanted them to send out to their Women in Tech Network. We would give them a plain text email, an HTML email, and a PDF. So whatever worked in their environment for setting it out, they could use, you know, same content but in different formats. Yeah, I think that's really good to like, yeah, really meet people in the place where they're at. From this, I get we'll take it. Oh, I was just gonna. So I was actually, if yours is related, then go first, because mine's completely off topic. <laughs> well, just to, to jump on that, I think um, something that we're fortunate enough to do, we do a lot of fair trade work, so there's some documentaries and things that we um, share with our members, and we're like, reach out to us if you'd like to do an in-home screening. Mm -hmm. So then a member will like contact us, and we'll send them you know, a DVD or how they can you know, access it, and then a lot of um, resources and literature for them. So then they host like their friends who may never have even heard of us or the campaign or the issue in their house and it's like, oh, well if you, you know, you've got this group of people there, maybe you guys can sign petitions and send them back to us and so then you're kind of like, shh, 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 shh. Once so they're trapped in your house, perfect. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if there's like any sort of kind of documentary or like film or some way to like bring people together, then, you know, I think that works. Really I just fun. want to piggyback on what I was saying before. You know, what I have found is if they're, I'm looking for like the silver bullet of how it's going to work in every state, there's no such thing. I have to identify leaders in the community. I have to ask them who their advocates are, who is a champion, who has a relationship with the lieutenant governor, for instance. You know, people who can go and have these conversations, and it's different no matter where you go. So it's a lot of late work, it just is. Um, but it's those relationships that can make the change. So it's, it's sort of, sometimes it's frustrating because it's so exhausting to try and figure out that silver bullet for each state. Yeah, there is, there is the recipe, there, the formula, it is different in every case. Yeah. So, okay, so mine is completely random, um, or completely off topic from what we've been talking about, but I was really hoping to get some feedback. So the challenge that I'm facing is that I have an organization, or I work for an organization where we have a 37 member board. And so... What? <laughs> yeah. Well, how yeah. many show up to board meetings? Uh, actually, we get um, a majority on the wow. meeting. Um, is there an executive committee? Mm, there's there's kind of an executive committee. So, um, like I said, I'm from I'm from Alaska, and so basically everything in Alaska is different and weird. <laughs> and, um, and that's just one example. So I think the problem that we're dealing with right now is we have a perception that the board is the you know quote unquote community leader, and they are the ones who are going to be going out and taking this role and tying everybody in. And honestly, some of them do that, but not most. And so it's kind of, oh, well, s staff should be doing that. Okay, well, there are like seven of us, so no. Um, and then, oh, well, the board should be doing that. And it's like, well, they, they don't. And so I guess how have any of you had, you know, like the experience in reaching out and finding other people and getting them on, you know, on our side and working with us without, and I think part of the problem is that they think that they're going to be stepping on somebody's toes, i.e. the board member. Mm -hmm. And again, it's one of those weird cultural things that, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to step in and offend anybody um, by saying that, oh, well, I'm taking over and it's going to be a power struggle. Right. But we really want to engage much more of the local level. Well, it seems like we have a suggestion over here on this side. Yeah, me. <laughs> we must be I am. Um, uh, my organization, we, we serve homeless families, and we're a secular organization, but we partner with the faith community. So I have 33 partner congregations of all stripes. Um, and I have a board of about 15. 
I once had a board of about 60, and I left after a year. <laughs> um, so I, I serve as the executive director. I've been in, in nonprofit leadership for a while. Um, and one of the things we noticed, our organization is about, uh, at about the 10-year-old mark, we started to lose some steam and some interest in our congregation. So what we decided to do was I talked to my board president, who I meet with monthly, have a great relationship. I said, Lisa, I'm not having a lot of luck connecting with clergy. You know, they, they, they know I'm coming after them. They know I'm going to ask them for something. <laughs> so what I think we could do, what we could try to do, is if we could divide up our clergy by our board, and have board members in their capacity as board members ask for a meeting, informing them that I would be coming along. But it's a board member to clergy meeting with me accompanying them. And we met with every single person. And this was kind of ramping up to last year because if, if any of you work with human service agencies, our funding has been slashed like crazy over the last few years. Um, so we were, we were actually looking at possibly closing a program or closing altogether. And over the course of the last 18 months or so, we had these meetings, and as of the close of last calendar year, we ended the year financially with more money in the bank than we've ever had. So just those relationships, yeah, it's, it's an amazing story. So just those relationships, and we added a couple of fundraisers that the board also generated, because they got excited. They were reinvigorated. They, they launched a, a walk, run, bike event that was hugely successful and they're gonna do it again. And I literally, all I had to do was show up. You know, they, they handled everything. Right, but you so that, to that re-engage them. Yes, and it, it re-engaged the clergy and my group. Yeah. So it, it, it worked very well for us. Thank you. Thank you. So we have five minutes. I want us to talk about love. <laughs> so this means we're gonna break down the barriers. I don't care what category card you are in right now. You're all part of us today. So uh, I'd like us to just really quickly, for us to like maybe shout out at least one minute, what is one way that you are offering deep recognition and gratitude to the members of your community? Because I'm going to steal all your good ideas. <laughs> so uh, who's going to go first? Who wants to be the very first to talk about the love? Tell us. Um, well, once a month in our newsletter, we do a person of the month. So we choose someone in the community and our community is national, so we have a lot of people to choose from. Um, we just choose something that um, they have done in the past or presently that they're working on, and we ask them some questions, they send us a picture, and we kind of focus on them for that month. And oh, we've gotten so many good responses from it. Um, we post it on our Facebook page and um, Twitter and Instagram. And it really like helps a lot. Like they love it. So, right, so we're really very out. public recognition mm -hmm. of appreciation. Now I'm gonna put you on the spot. I know you do a really amazing stuff. Like that. <laughs> I'm gonna guess the story that you want me to tell. Um, so, <laughs> did you say your name and what organization? I'm Mel, and I'm an expert organizer in Cambridge, England. And um, what I did recently over Christmas. So my job as an ambassador there is to support the European. Um, volunteers and organizers. So I wanted to kind of like cheer them on and say thank you and stuff. So um, has anybody ever heard of a tool called VSnap? V and then Snap. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I had to spell that. <laughs> 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 um, uh, basically, it's a tool that allows you to make up to 60 second uh, videos really, really quickly and easily, either on your phone or your, or your computer or whatever, um, and send them just like you would send an email, so it goes to them on their email. Um, and it's more personal than sending an email, it's you know face to face, and so I just made a um, made a video individually for each of those people and said, you know, said their name, said the, exactly what I was thankful for, and woo woo, and kind of, you know, made it goofy and dressed up in Santa stuff and whatever, and said Merry Christmas, and um, yeah, that's kind of a, an interesting way to say thank you. But it was totally bespoke. There was only one of those in the world, which I thought had a bit of a unique power to it. On this side, I see a lot of lovers over here. <laughs> what do you guys do like, to tell like, your community members that they inspire you? Um, you're in in-house calling, where um, people on staff, we have a staff of about 30, so we're pretty lucky. 
Um, and some of them are a little shy, but are <laughs> come here and we kind of break a little on like we just call and say thank you. No ask, like just it's just people really respond well to that. And then they want to donate. They're like, oh, well, you're not gonna ask me, then I'm gonna give you money. <laughs> Marshmallow. Uh, marshmallow. And there's an allergy, we'll deal with it, but you know. Yeah, so really just like high touch with staff members. So you're part of our experience. I think you were first. No, go ahead. Um, we, uh, we partnered with a few other groups in town to throw a giant Christmas party, recognizing that most of the I mean, our people are nonprofits, so uh, our, our members, our people kind of are all working, working out on boards, volunteer nonprofits. Most of them are working way too hard, not getting paid well enough, working in small enough places, they don't really have a Christmas party. So we did a giant group Christmas party. Uh, other groups organized in previous years, it's called the NGO Ho Ho Ho. <laughs> <laughs> Basically it's a, a few hundred people come out who, most of them are in the same place that has no budget and only six people. So we say, well, imagine you worked at a big company, they would throw you a big Christmas party, so we're gonna do that. Um, and it's so much fun. Where are you? Uh, Victoria, first one. Yeah. So, two hundred and fifty thousand people or so. I thought it was actually crafty because this was your, your first year in existence, so it's also a real way for you to bring new people into your community. Santa Claus got oh, very okay. drunk. The NGO ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> we have photo booth and the disaster. <laughs> we do. We do a lot of. Um, just old school handwritten notes mm -hmm. instead of formal yeah. stuff, so pretty high touch. And then we transition our, our, our families, we, we pack them up, we pack up the program and move to another host congregation on Sundays. So Sunday night or Monday morning, we ask the kids in the program if they wouldn't mind writing a thank you note. Mm -hmm. We just give blank sheets of paper and coloring, you know, utensils, and they write, you know, they make rainbows and pictures of themselves and the volunteers and food. And we just mail that to the congregation we just left and that's huge. Sweet. Actually I find N10 is really good about that. I've received two handwritten notes from them over the last year. It's classy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> One of our participants, he came our core member after the workshop and was amazing. And she he came back and read our lessons about Google Maps and he began to to observe the river, the water quality of the rivers with naked eye and record the data, data onto the Google map. That was advanced even today. Yeah, and he then became our core member and contributed a lot to our organization. So, yeah. brought people in. We have room for two more. I see one and two. So at Parents as Teachers, we have, because we have so many programs, we try to do, we have this prize called the Lozos Prize for Excellence in Innovation. And it's where the National Center recognizes a program or um, a community-based uh, program that has done something amazing in their community. So we give them a prize that's named after like a, like, a lifelong veteran of, of early childhood education advocacy. 
And, um, and so it, it gives them the recognition within their community and within our own community, within the 2000 program, that they are awesome, you know. And we make a huge deal about it. We write a press kit for them to use in their own community. We pull in press and we put it on the website. They get a plaque and they get something in the National Center that's permanent. Um, so it's kind of more formal. And we, we do all these other little things too that really high touch, awesome stuff. But, and that formal touch also makes them feel very special yeah. on an organizational level. I love the giving them a press kit so they can actually get it into their own community. That's, <laughs> and that's it works. crafty, it's very yeah. crafty. So one way that we, um, because we do youth summits and working with youth and a way to close out a lot of our workshops that I found has been really effective um, is by like, it's this activity about giving recognition. Mm -hmm. So one person will scream, I got a recognition, and then everyone, the collective like call and response is, everyone screams recognize, and then that person has the floor, <laughs> and they're able to recognize anyone in the group that for something great that they saw, some act of courage, or whatever, and when we worked in pairs, um, I've done an activity where they had to recognize each other, and like look at each other, so like I was recognizing her on the have to look at her in her eyes, because a lot of times we like to recognize someone here, but then talk to the group, and it comes less intimate, and like, there was like, a lot of waterworks, and <laughs> it was a good way to like, keep that energy and connection as they headed back to their own various communities. Um, Thank you. On that theme then, okay, take it. One I didn't say anything, I just didn't have right. okay. <laughs> I'd like you to join me in that kind of deep recognition to my co-organizers. So Bethany, you want to do the recognizements with me? Bethany, you are amazing. Recognize. <laughs> Kristen, thank you for plotting this and putting all the details of this together. I recognize you. You are spots. Thank you. And finally, to the, all of you who I don't actually have time to really give proper attention to, know that you inspire me and I bless the, my lucky stars every day that I get to work with people who are community driven. Your passion inspires me and every time I get together in a space like this, I'm, I'm really humbled because you are good and this is how things get done. Thank you.